Hello and welcome back and today is the next part of my series of videos about upgrading memory on Synology NASes unofficially. I know you guys are aware but I talk about this a lot on the channel that with the Synology NAS series, particularly the newest generation of NAS, there is somewhat of a kind of sticky wicket amongst a number of you with regards to memory. Synology themselves volunteer that their latest generation that features DDR4 memory is only upgradable with their own memory. That is the Synology series of DDR4 memory modules. For those who haven't seen one before, this is how they look. They are pretty much the same as normal memory, but I won't have the light going nuts there against the background. And this memory here is available pre-installed inside the device, but with the majority of their newest generation of devices, they are all arriving with an empty slot. So you can upgrade the memory with these unofficial modules, which is all fair and well. However, a number of you, aren't overly happy with either the memory quantities on offer or the price of that memory. And it's a debating point that we've had over a number of years, but Synology have always been very, very firm on this. If you do upgrade with unofficial memory or use memory quantities that exceed that of the recommended maximum, then you could destabilize your storage array and they can't really be held accountable for what is going to happen ultimately in validating your warranty whether it could be bricking your system or destabilizing your entire storage array and there are arguments to and for that unfortunately there will always be people that try and indeed as soon as we started talking about this newer generation of devices a number of you immediately were asking what's the maximum memory can you use crucial how big can you go more and more and more so for you guys out there that's why this series of videos exists i'm doing this so you don't have to just remember that if you do choose to do this there are risks involved so i don't recommend it but i can't tell you what to do can i now this is the ds720 plus it's a device that arrives with two gig of ddr4 memory by default it can be upgraded with one of the four gig modules from synology up to a maximum of six gig of DDR4 memory supported by Synology. That is their recommended maximum. But the CPU inside supports up to a maximum eight gig officially of DDR4 SODIMM um, memory at 2,666 megahertz non-ECC. What we're gonna be doing today is installing a 16 gigabyte crucial memory module. Now this module costs I would say even a fraction less than the four gig from Synology. So what we want to discover today is um, a few fold. First and foremost, we want to see if the NAS is going to see it. Two, how does it react to it? Can we utilize it? Can we use it in different software? And moreover, is DSM going to run with this module? Now, after we've tested this, we are going to power the device down regardless of the outcome. And then we're going to try a 32 gig module from crucial so that's around about 150 to 170 pounds of 32 gigabytes of memory so we are going to be testing that out now full disclosure the first time we did this test was utilizing the ds220 plus which featured the same generation and family series of cpu but in dual core not quad core that device saw the 16 gig with some graphical inconsistencies within dsm but the minute we installed the 32 gig module we were kind of worried that we bricked our system with that. And we're gonna continue moving forward and we're gonna test each of the newer generation of devices to see what happens. Also, in a follow-up series of videos coming soon, we are completely stripping these devices down to show you the internal boards and more appropriately, let you know what that other memory area looks like. We've already done it with the 220 and we could see that there was only one available sodium port and the rest was soldered chips but let's see if that logic applies to the rest of the series. But without further ado, let's get that memory installed. Now, today we're using this 720. We've already got an SHR and DSM pre-installed inside this device. And if we remove the hard drive, because we're gonna to need to make sure we remove our hard drive during this test, because the memory module bay is on the inside, make sure you've got the device powered down. But I do recommend you've got DSM and your RAID already completed on your storage media regardless of whether you use unofficial memory or if you use official memory because you're more likely for the device not to reach any conflicts about a memory upgrade there shouldn't really be any but personally i would make sure that you've got the software pre-installed on the vanilla box before you start going upgrading and playing with the peripherals now if we look at the side of the device there we can see that memory module there that empty memory bay the sodium port there the other one is tucked inside i presume as loose sodium chips but we will find out in due course now 
if we go to the inside there, we need to get hold of our brand new crucial sodium module. Make sure that it's label facing front in the case of this device and this memory. And if I install that just there, angle it into the slot, there's two clips either side. As you can see there, there's the memory module. Once you've got it fully laid out inside the sodium port, just angle it down and hear that noise. That noise means that both of those clips have attached. And if you bring it in real close, you'll be able to see the entire module is installed. And that's really it with regard to the memory installation. And again, we will be repeating this with the 32 gigabyte DDR4 sodium module shortly. So I'm gonna install these drives and then we're gonna power this device right up. We're gonna power it up, get into the DSM platform if it'll let us, and we're gonna see if the system has reacted to this memory upgrade. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it should be fine. And then we'll move over to that 32 gig test. So let's get this connected up, take a good look inside this device. Right, so we've initialized our DS720 Plus, and I'm pleased to say that the device has booted successfully. It's booted up, we've already made our way into the device, there's the IP192 ending 105, 105, and if we make our way into the device, we can see how it has accepted our 720 plus memory upgrade with the crucial 16 gig now memory utilization if it's anything like our test for the 220 plus and 420 plus previously should be pretty low if we make our way into the resource monitor we can have some idea about how the system has accepted this memory upgrade so if we go into the memory tab, we can see successfully that it is seeing that 18 gig memory module. It's utilizing some of the memory already for the system operations, but the memory um, section of the resource monitor does seemingly see the 16 gigabyte upgrade in conjunction with the two gigabyte that was already pre-installed on the Synology DS720. Now, if we make our way into some of the other applications, such as Plex Media Server, and virtual machine manager we're able to see if we're if it's possible to allocate some of these storage options so let's install virtual machine manager there in the background for the first time and have it ready to create our phantom virtual machine and at the same time log in to plex media server and check out the dashboard pertaining to this synology nas so we can have some idea about how well this device can see the memory and if indeed it can utilize it so let's fast forward to the upload of both of these bits of software. Plex is going to take an extra second or so. So I've been allocating so many of these NASs to Plex recently. So let's fast forward to Plex being completed on this NAS. Right, so we've created the Virtual Machine Manager software installation, and we can have some idea about whether it's possible to create a virtual machine area for us to play with utilizing this memory. So there's a Microsoft Windows option. We'll scroll forward. We can see the storage area that we're utilizing. And we can have a look at the drop down for memory and i'm pleased to say all the way down there it does allow us to allocate up to 18 gigabytes of memory which is very good indeed so let's go for 14 gig there call this test we're not going to pre-install we're not going to utilize more than two of those cpus for the vm I'm going to click next give it maybe 100 gig it doesn't hugely matter because we're not going to be installing windows or anything on this this is going to be just a basic virtual machine that allows us to see if it can allocate that memory to the vm i'm going to click cancel we're not going to mount any isos or any of that stuff there we're just going to click straight on forward give whoever we want access and go ahead and create that virtual machine environment Needless to say, in Plex, if we make our way in, I've already just associated this 720 with the 720 Plus. I haven't used any of the libraries because I've not created any libraries for Plex. But if we make our way into the management of this server, we should be able to take a good look in the background at the bandwidth, the CPU, and of course, what we care about the most, the memory. And I'm pleased to say that the memory is just as low as we hoped it would be. If we make our way into the resource monitor still we should be able to see memory allocation and if we go into the task manager we'll be able to see just how much memory and more is being utilized by different devices so there's plex media server there it's only using 105 meg of memory which is indicative of what we're seeing here and the virtual machine here we're just going to go ahead and kick off that vm so let's power it on and this vm now 
if if fully fledged will have access to that 18 gigabyte of memory pre-allocated to it if we connect it because remember we're not actually using it in this vm yet but as we can see from the bottom there we have now pre-allocated 88 percent of the system and that's because we equipped that memory onto this VM. So the memory has been usable in this sense, which has been incredibly useful and far more useful information moving forward. So for now, I'm moderately satisfied by this. I'm gonna go ahead and shut down that VM. We're gonna force that shut down. We're then gonna delete that VM in time for the next video. We're then going to exit the resource monitor, exit that. We're then going to disassociate this NAS with Plex Media Server, because we're going to want to utilize that later on. And with this virtual machine, if we go ahead and delete it, this will allow us later on to just go ahead and, uh, one minute for shut down there, test the 32 gigabyte DDR4 crucial memory module inside this NAS. Full disclosure, it didn't work in the DS220 Plus, it didn't work in the DS420 Plus, and frankly, I don't think it's gonna work on this one either, but we've got nothing to lose by trying. So I'm gonna shut this NAS down as soon as that VM's deleted. I'm gonna remove Plex, and as we can see, that memory utilization there, the system in the background, all gone in Plex. But let's shut down this NAS and learn more to see if this 32 gig module is going to work. Right, so technically one could argue the 16 gigabytes of crucial DDR4 memory upgrade was indeed a success. We saw the 16 gig, we were able to allocate it to a VM, it was recognized in applications like Plex as well as in the resource monitor. So without further ado, let's move on to the next stage of testing, which is of course the 32 gigabyte test module now bear in mind this is way outside the remit of what the manufacturer Synology and the CPU manufacturer Intel had in mind for this device and whatever happens just know that what we're doing right now is basically well out of the majority of our comfort zones now this is again around about 170 maybe up to 150 and 170 pounds crucial DDR4 32 gig memory at DDR4 and again it's made up of eight modules uh, cells either side. So a decent amount of memory there all over it, front and back. Let's get that th uh, 16 gigabyte module out of this device. There we go. Boop. There's our other module, pop that over there. And now we're going to install our crucial memory inside. Now, at the time of recording, I have conducted this test already with the DS220 Plus as mentioned failure and I did this test with a DS420 plus failure so I don't exactly hold out a vast amount of hope for this device but there's the module inside there let's put it in there's the clicks and as you can see the memory module is inside there let's get that double check so I was a bit uncertain and there we go we've installed our memory modules so now what we're going to do is reinstall our hard drives and we're going to boot this device up for the first time and then double check to see if hope upon hope it's going to recognize that 32 gig module but whatever happens remember what you're doing now is a risky gambit you are potentially risking your data and your warranty so please be sure you know what you're doing before you do this and i'm doing this so you don't have to as mentioned i'm sorry about all the disclaimers but let's be realistic data is important but Let's get this device connected, take a good look whether it's a success or not. Well, unfortunately, as we expected, the Synology DS720 Plus did not see that upgrade of 32 gig DDR4 crucial memory. As you can see from the, on the left-hand side of the screen, I hope, you should be able to see the video recording we're doing of the devices. I've left the Synology DS220 Plus next to it with its default two gig of memory running. And as you can see, it's got LEDs for the hard drives and the network activity, whereas the four, I'm sorry, the 720 Plus is unfortunately not responsive. And indeed, the flash pattern of the LED light on the front of the 720 indicates memory problems. So I think we can largely ascertain that this device is not going to support crucial DDR4 memory anytime in the future. And that's not a huge surprise. Uh, notwithstanding Synology's rather quirky six gigabyte maximum on this device, this CPU uh, was recommended for eight gigabyte maximum. So 32 gig, I think is just a little leap too far. Now, this is test 
Beast 3 in four videos that we're looking at the latest generation of Synology's 20 plus series NASes with the 920 still to come. So far, we have seen that in these devices, the 16 gig module in almost all cases has been visible. I'm not gonna say it's been a smooth run and in some cases we've certainly seen stability and graphical inconsistencies, but still nevertheless, it's still been good that you can go down this road, albeit unofficially and maybe at the risk of your warranty. Um, with the 920, we don't think we're gonna see better results, but it never hurts to try. And of course, we do recommend if you are gonna attempt this to make sure you do it safely and make sure you've got a backup in place. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Click like if you have, click subscribe to learn more as we go through more and more things that you can do with the Synology 20 Plus series. And I will see you next time.